Chad French here with Next Vision Instruments, the industry's most trusted source for pre-owned ophthalmic equipment. Today we're going to be overviewing the uh, Iowa Master 500 as if you we shipped from here to your location um, and everything you see here is how um, you will get the instrument um, and next we'll go through how to um, connect all the cables, get everything set up as well as um, operator training. Okay, so included, the table will come on a pallet. This will be shipped via freight. This is a Zeiss table specifically designed for this unit. You will come, or you also get the uh, Iowa Master, uh, the biometer itself here. It will, when it comes from us, come with a keyboard, a cable from the unit to the table, a power cord for the table, because this table is electric, it goes up and down. It will have a test eye and a USB uh, stick there with the user's manual on it for your reference. Now on the operator's right side, we're gonna come down here, you'll notice a green power button. This is where the unit gets power. And then there will be some connectors here. It's hard to see here, but there's a purple here. There's a green above it. If you notice the keyboard is color coded. So we'll plug those into the correct ports. This short cord here goes through the table. This goes there so the unit gets power and plugged in there. On the back side, the other end here will get plugged into the table like that. We'll take our power cord and go to the base of the column here. Plug this in and plug this in into the wall. At this point, your table should have power, which means your unit does as well. Now these tables have a pull-out tray for the keyboard, so you basically will fish the wire behind here and run it under the table up through here to plug in your keyboard, which has a mouse on it as well. And you just tighten the cords up with a zip tie, or you can stick them up in the table, which is what I have done. Um, once you have it connected, we'll flip the green switch on. Okay, you'll get this screen. Um, and it tells you, always check the calibration of your system before carrying out measurements on patients. And it tells you the last date that you checked calibration, which is today's date. January 30th, 2023, um, we're going to pull out the keyboard, select start test, I'll go over to my test eye here, now the test eye looks like this. This is the side for white to white measurement. Unloosen the thumb screw so you can turn it. Axial length and K's there. And the anterior chamber depth, you'll use this side. So you do have to turn it during the measurement, but we'll start here on the axial length. And then there are two holes. Show this. There's a hole here. And on the other side, this will just fit right down in the holes, snap into place, and it's sitting there like a patient. Okay, now once we have our test eye in place, we will unlock the unit here. 
and you can see it starts to come into view. Now you want to make sure that the test eye is as straight as possible so you're getting a good measurement. And this has a little green crosshair in the middle. It's kind of hard to see here. It's a green dotted line crosshair. You want to, you'll see the reflexes here start to come into view. Um, and you can see this light will turn to yellow. Um, you want to center the crosshairs and then slowly bring it forward until you get a green light here. You'll click the button once. It's going to get ready. You click again. When that light is green, and it's going to take five measurements automatically. Then you hit the space bar on your keyboard. That did axial length in Ks. After you hit the space bar, it's going to move us to the ACD and to your chamber depth. Now you go over to your test eye and rotate it. Again, making sure it's as straight as possible for the measurement. You'll see it come into focus here. Now you'll see the light reflex and it turns green and this little uh, yellow and then this green arrow will tell you what direction to go. So it's telling us to go this way, but come in. And then you can see as the, the dot in the center is between the reflex on the uh, cornea here, as well as the, what is the iris here and the light is green. Once that's green, we're gonna click the button it's going to give us our measurement. We're going to hit space bar again to move on. And then this is the white to white. It tells you to mount the calibration scale on the device, center the white to white calibration scale. The scale must completely fill the video window, focus the black scale lines, and then press the joystick button for the measurement. So we'll go back to our test eye and flip it around to the opposite side of the anterior chamber depth. And these are the black lines. Well, let's get this, we'll hit okay. And these are the black lines it was talking about. We're gonna wanna fill the entire window with those black lines and then push it in or out to get those lines as clear as you can. And click the joystick white to white calibration value is 1.01 millimeters. On the test eye itself, it will tell you it's supposed to be 1.00 with a plus or minus. It can be within tolerance up to 0 0.02. So we were at the intolerance there. This is the axial length tells you this test eye is supposed to be 20.79 millimeters with a plus or minus tolerance of 0 0.05. And same thing with the Ks here. For the anterior chamber depth, it is supposed to be 3.24 with plus or minus 0.1 tolerance. And once all of your values are within that range, you're good to go for the day and measure your first patient. If you have any questions on how to do what I just did or use it, uh, the Iowa Master 500 in general, again, this is a user's manual on a thumb drive. Plug that into your computer, pull it up, and you can go to the section that'll walk you through how to um, operate, check calibration, um, and overall usage of the Iowa Master 500. Now, once we've checked the calibration of the instrument, there are some icons here along the bottom. This is for a new patient, and this is how you toggle through the um, different scans that we check during calibration that will also take um, for uh, measurements for cataract surgery or for the biometry reading. So um, we're gonna go to the home screen here. Um, if you are um, pulling up a patient that we're re-measuring, 
you would go to patient list. This eye check is for checking calibration. Um, that is the only patient that we have in here as of now. This one doesn't have any patients currently. So we are going to put a test. With a generic date of birth. Um, you can enter a refraction here. You do not have to, um, as well as their acuities. Here, if they've had cataract surgery, if they're a phacic, um, if they've had um, retina surgery and had all the um, vitreous removed, replaced with silicone, you can do that. Um, basically, this is just to select the current status of the eye. Sometimes they're repeating measurements, so this one would have an uh, IOL selected, and if not, we'll leave it as phacic. Also, if they've had LASIK, um, PRK, RK, or if they're untreated, you can select that option as well, or not known whether they've had any surgery or not. Once we have everything entered, we'll click the next icon here. The patient information that we just entered should let us know what patient we're on there. Um, and this is overview mode, the initial screen to where we'll line the patient up for measuring. Okay, so now we have our test patient lined up. I'm gonna do the same thing as a test eye. I'm gonna center them up and you have these arrows that kind of tell you which way to go. You wanna clear these uh, light reflexes up as clear as you can. By pulling in or out, once you get the green light, we're going to click the joystick button. Same thing for this is going to be doing the Ks. I'm going to back it out until we get the green light and click the button. It's going to do Ks and axial length automatically. Took three readings of the Ks and averaged them. And it took five axial length measurements here and the average is there. If you want, you can continue to click here to um, capture more A scans. This is the interior chamber depth. We're gonna clear that dot up as clear as we can and then follow the arrow until we get the green light. Click our button. It took five readings and averaged them here. I'm clicking the space bar to go in between after we're finished with one measurement, I'll click the space bar to move on. And this is the white to white. We're gonna center it up, get the Myers as clear as we can. Click the button. Click OK. And click the space bar again. It goes back automatically to the axial length for the left eye. Same thing, clearing the Myers up and clicking the button. We have a green light, I'm gonna click again. Just took the case, now it's doing the axial length. And as long as these are pretty consistent and pretty close, we'll stick with those, hit the space bar. So it's going to tell you if you don't get a good measurement there. I'm going to click space bar. Last white to white reading. Click OK. And we're done. So once we've taken the measurement, you have all, you can go back to which, um, if you need to check the different measurements. So this is the uh, A scan and keratometry, anterior chamber depth, 
white to white. Once all that looks good and you've got good measurements, you don't need to reshoot. You will come to this little IOL button, which was down here. Um, if you have multiple surgeons, you can add them here or on another screen, you'll add them and select them here. And then depending on the surgeon, you can set up which lenses they prefer. You will select them from a drop down here um, and you know do up to four. Once you have the lenses selected, your target refraction where you want it, you'll click this calculate button here. It's the holiday formula, or there's the Hygis, the SRK, Hoffer Q, Holiday, SRKT. You can do multi formulas from here as well. And then from here, you would hit print, um, and it would give you your print page um, for the lenses. And then if you wanted to just see the data here, once you're finished with the measurements, you would just hit print from this screen, and it would print your um, values for the, the measurements that you took for the lens calculations. Another scenario, uh, let's say you want to pull up a, a patient to rescan. I'm going to go to the patient list over here and you'll see that this one only has two patients. The, uh, the calibration check here, is, that's the one you'll use always for that. And this is the test patient that we entered. We're going to highlight this is the only existing measurement. There will be several here if you repeat um, numerous times. We're going to highlight the one that we took, click open, and it's going to bring us back to um, the scan that we took. Um, if you got an erroneous measurement, so if a patient blinked, um, sometimes if they have a real dense uh, cataract or some kind of corneal pathology, you will get either uh, these will be lit up red or you'll have an exclamation point. Um, so if that's the case, you want five good measurements no matter what. So we would click highlight the erroneous one or the one that um, is giving you the error message, whether it be an exclamation point or uh, red in color, and you'll hit delete on your keyboard and you can select yes. It will delete that one, which also changes your average down here. Um, and then you can rescan. Now, if you want to rescan a patient completely without pulling up the previous measurements, you would highlight them, click the joystick button, and go down to your eye here. If you have questions on how to configure what lenses, add surgeons, and set the preferences, um, you can refer to the user's manual or call our main office number at 727-483-9140 um, and you can be connected with a technician who can help uh, over the phone uh, assist on how to do that. And then so at the end of the day, um, if you once you're finished, clinic is over, you come here to this button all the way on the right hand side click it, it'll have exit IOL master. We're gonna click okay. System is shutting down. Now once uh, the screen goes off, you can flip your power switch here and be sure to cover with a dust cover.